to 2. It says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Are you guys ready to worship this morning? All right. Here we go.
shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Young, your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. 
even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Father, we humbly come before your throne of grace and ask that you forgive us of our sins. We ask that you pour out your spirit in this place, renew our minds, renew our hearts, shape us and transform us in a way that transcends beyond the fleeting desires of this world into a kingdom that is like no other. For you are a God who does not withhold. So Lord, pour out your spirit in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, we want to call upon your name and ask that you stir up this hunger, stir up the thirst in our hearts. I invite you, church, to please lift up your hand, lift up your voice, and declare the powerful, precious, mighty name of Jesus. Maraming binago yung ano eh. Maraming binago yung Lord sa buhay ko na meron ako before. Mas lumalim. Compared noong para nagbabanda lang ako, walang ministry. Although Christian ako, pero hindi ganun kalalim yung relationship ko kay Lord. Parang tamang attend lang ng church. Pakainig ng konting salita ng word, word ng Lord. Tapos parang wala lang. Hindi ganun kalalim. My name is Noemi Del Rosario. So before ako napunta ng SBCF, isa akong uh, musician, a drummer. 
2020, ito yung time na kala mo end of the world na. <laughs> Parang end of the world na. Sabi ko magra-rapture na po ba, Lord? <laughs> Ba't ganito yung nangyayari sa paligid? So, may, ano, nakakaramdam ako ng pangamba, syempre. Hindi, bilang Christian, medyo mahirap yung time na yun eh. So, doon ka talaga nasusubok ng Lord na, o, oh, kakapit ka pa ba sa akin? O, bibitaw ka na ba? Parang ganun ang pakaramdam na. Pero nung time na yun, mas pinili kong sumunod eh. So, nagtsaga din, sa ministry kasi, nagtsaga kami na, ano, na mag-record online. <laughs> Kahit wala masyadong instrument, sinaga namin mag-record online ng kanya-kanya. So, ano lang, binubuo lang yung ano namin noon, nung time na yun, yung firewall, binubuo lang para makabuo kami ng isang song ng hiwa-hiwalay. So, sobrang hirap. And then, yung work ko noon, ah, uh, syempre yung income ko, bawas. Naging parang ano na lang siya, 50% lang yung sinasahod ko. And then, may ilang buwan ako ng walang sahod. Doon ko nakita yung, ano, doon ko nakita yung kapangyarihan ng Lord na pag binigay mo talaga sa kanya lahat, sinurender mo sa kanya lahat, siya yung mag-guide sa'yo. So, 2021, February, wala na akong totaling work. And then, may ginamit yung Lord na isang tao. Doon nag-start yung, magkaroon ako ng business. Yung income ko, na dating wala. <laughs> Sinadagdagan. So, maliit, maliit lang, pero at least meron. And then, sariling income ko na, kumbaga, wala na akong boss, wala akong wala na lahat yung ano. Kung baga, naging sarili ko na yung business. So, nag, naging okay naman yung flow. Paunti-unti. Ganun ang nangyari sa akin. Pero yung ano, yung time na mawawala ka ng member ng family, yun ang masakit. Katapusan ng August, nagkasakit naman ang tatay ko. And then, kitang-kita ko lahat yung yung pag ng tatay ko. Hindi ko talaga in-expect yun na mangyari sa buhay ko. Kasi, ano eh, nagkaroon ako ng business, parang eto na ako eh. Parang, parang eto pa lang yung time na bumabawi ako sa buhay ko. Parang, eto na may, may business na ako, may sarili na ako. Napoprovide ko yung kailangan ng mga magulang ko. Two weeks, two weeks naging bedridden yung tatay ko. Yung superman namin, kita ko nakahiga na lang, nakadiaper. Ililinis lang nanay ko, hindi ko makain, hindi umiinom. Wala kaming magawa kasi hindi naman din ganun ka ano yung pera namin that time. Hindi namin siya madala ng mas magandang ospital. Hinintay namin yung pagkakataon na sabi namin, Lord, kung pagagalingin mo yung tatay ko, pagalingin niyo po. <laughs> Talagang iniiling namin na sana madagdagan pa yung buhay. Kung gagaling siya, gagaling siya. Pero kung uuwi siya, yung pinakabasakit. <laughs> sabi, na, sabi ko sa nanay ko, na yung mukhang uuwi na si tatay ka. Parang ito na yung muling araw ni tatay, sabi ko. Tapos, kitang-kita kung paano siya mawala ng hininga. Hindi <laughs> ko na-expect talaga na mawawala yung tatay ko. <laughs> Ayun yung time na sobrang bigat. Kasi, <laughs> kasi close kami ng tatay ko. Parang kumbaga sa ano, siya yung pinaka-best friend ko sa amin sa bahay. <laughs> Yung SBCF, nung time din na nawala si tatay, sobrang laking tulong sa akin ng SBCF na hindi nila ako iniwan. Sila Jackie, sila Pimao. Si Pimao nun tumawag pa sa bahay. Nag -video. Actually, nakabideo call niya pa yung tatay ko bago mawala. Hindi nila ako iniwan. Never nila ako iniwan. Nung time na talagang sobrang down ako. Grabe, grabe yung pagmamahal nila sa akin dito. <laughs> sobrang nakaka-overwhelm. Yung alam mo yung pakaramdam mo na kapatid, kapatid mo yung mga nandito ka. Yung sobrang welcome, yun yung pakaramdam mo talaga, pamilya. Never nila ako iniwan and papasalamat ako doon. Sa kabila ng mga nangyayari, mas pinili ko maging positive. Mas pinili kong maniwala and then mas pinili kong isurrender yung buhay ko. Mas pinili kong kumapit lalo sa kanya sa kabila nung mga nangyari sa akin na mahirap. Mas pinili ko siyang sundin. Mas pinili kong maging mabuting kristyano. Ngayon naman, overwhelmed naman ako sa 
blessing ng Lord. So, papasalamat ako na hindi niya ako iniwan. Hindi niya ako, never niya ako iniwan talaga. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness You have 
been faithful Oh yes, oh Lord All my life You have been so, so good With every breath Meron akong kaibigan na ini-invite ako sa church. Lagi ko lang iniindian. Lagi lang ako nagsasabing pas muna. Niloko pa sila na sa church pa kayo. Masama yan. <laughs> Sabi niya sa akin na pag, pag hindi ko nagustuhan, tablayin ko na raw siya. <laughs> ako si Mark Christian Ponseca. 2017, yun yung may Sunday doon na hindi makakapag-set up si AJ at si Da. Nag-message sila sa akin, sabi nila na kung pwedeng, kung pwedeng tulungan ko si Bolts mag-set up, pumayag naman ako na, kasi tropa ko rin naman si Bolts. So, samama ko sa kanila mag-set up. Naramdaman ko noon na yung ginagawa ko, hindi pala para sa sarili ko. Yung ginagawa kong pag-set up, paglatag ng table, para kay God yun, hindi para sa akin o para, para kahit kanino. Nag-decide na ako noon na magtuloy-tuloy at maging volunteer ng SBCS. Hanggang sa nabaptize ako at tuloy-tuloy na akong nagsaserve kay Lord. Nung umalis na yung SBCS sa Admiral, nung lumipat na kami sa Lighthouse, yung pag-set up, pack up, hindi na madali para sa amin eh. Kasi yung gamit, gamit ng church, kukunin namin mula, mula Triboa hanggang sa Lighthouse. Yung, yung pag kukuha namin ng gamit na yun, kung iisipin talaga, hassle. Kasi, mag, magbibi, mainit, mainit sa L3, ikakamada pa namin yung gamit. Gigising kami na maaga. Late kami magla-lunch. Pero, lahat kami, yung puso namin, alam namin na para kay Lord yung ginagawa namin. Hindi namin naramdaman na hassle yung ginagawa namin na yun. Ginagawa namin yung para kay Lord. Yung feeling na pagkatapos namin mag-setup, yun na yung kakain na kami. <laughs> yung tapos na kami dalin yung gamit sa Trebowa. Yung feeling ko doon na masaya, masaya, masaya yung ginagawa namin na makakain na kami, magkukentuhan kami. Kung pinagkukentuhan din namin si Lord, kuno rin yung mga struggles namin sa buhay, nag-share kami. Naging, naging masaya yung mga ganong pangyayari sa amin ngayon. Naging masaya rin ako sa pagsiserve ko dahil kasama ko rin yung mga kaibigan ko. Sabay-sabay kami nag-grow. At masaya kami na ginagawa namin to na magkakasama kami. Isa, isa rin sa ni magandang pangyayari sa buhay ko na sa sabay-sabay sabay kami lumaki. Hindi namin alam na point na darating kami sa pagsiserve si Lord na magkakasama. Nung 2018, nung na-diagnose si Papa sa, na may brain tumor, naramdaman ko dito na parang sinusubok ni Lord yung faith ko na kung hanggang saan lang ako. Mula pa lang, ano, una pa lang na nakikita ko na hindi pa siya na-diagnose, sumasakit pa lang yung ulo niya. Araw-araw siyang sumusuka. Hindi na, hindi na ako tumigil sa pagpipray nun na sana pagalingin siya ni Lord. Yung kahit na ganun yung nangyayari sa kanya, naniniwala pa rin ako kay God na may miracle eh. Nag, tinanong ko siya na, nag, nagpipray lang ako lagi na sana pagil, pagalingin siya. Pero merong isang gabi na ano eh, na parang isang araw na parang ang lakas niya, na tinawag niya kami lahat, alam, alam niya kung ano yung pangalan namin. 
Tapos, nung gabi na yun, parang nahihirapan na siya humingi. Nagiging alo na siya. Nag-pray ako kay Lord na, Lord, kung ano yung will mo, ikaw na yung bahala. Tapos, mga ilang araw, kinuha na siya ni Lord. Yung akala ko na healing na ibibigay ni Lord para sa kanya, yung Lord na makakasama ko pa siya, ay yung, yung makakasama ko pa siya na matagal. Pero yung binigay ni Lord na healing sa kanya, yung healing na wala ng pain, yung usama malaya na yung gagawin niya. Hindi ko may, mapigilan yung sarili ko na tanongin sa Lord na bakit? Bakit, Lord? Eh, yung parang gusto ko sabihin dito na ginawa ko naman lahat ng kaya ko eh. Pero, ba't ginawa mo pa rin? Parang pinaintindi sa akin ni Lord noon na yung will na to, hindi, hindi mo will to, will ko to. May mas maganda akong plano para sa'yo. Yun, yung mga, yun na lang yung mga pinanghawakan ko na salita na makapaggaan ng loob ko. At alam ko rin na believer siya ni Jesus Christ kaya alam ko na sa heaven siya mapupunta. Alam ko na magkikita rin kami doon. <laughs> yung pag-follow pala kay Jesus Christ, hindi, pala, hindi maging madali. Hindi madali. Parang mas the more na pinapalo ko si Christ, parang marami rin yung trials na dumadating sa buhay ko. Pero alam, alam ko na ngayon na kahit na anong dumaan na trial sa buhay ko, hindi na ako mag-isa. Alam ko na kasama ko si Lord. May Lord, may Lord na ako masasandalan.
That's so amazing. Let's give it up again for our youth band. Wow. It's so shocking. Oh, my goodness. We are full house today. Uh, I think we should have gotten a bigger location. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it's a good problem. You know, I, I woke up this morning and I was feeling absolutely great. Uh, I got out of bed and I was wondering, why, why am I feeling so good? And then I remembered, oh, we're launching a new facility. Oh, my gosh. And we're here today celebrating God's goodness in the life of His church, SBCF. You know, it's actually been 12 years in the making, 12 years for us to be where we are today to get us to this point. You know, what we're witnessing today didn't just happen all of a sudden. Like one day there was a prompting, God says, oh, hey, share, start a church and poof, Harbor Point. No, <laughs> it didn't happen like that. You know, in the journey in 12 years, there's been ups and downs hardships and trials, the need to persevere, yet in every step of the journey, there was joy and God gave us that joy. And uh, throughout it all, the story of SBCF is a testimony of what faith in the Lord yields, the blessings that come with perseverance, and God's never-ending faithfulness to His people. Amen? You know, so I want to take us now back in time, if I may. We first started the church back in 2010 in an old abandoned office uh, in Treboa where just a handful of people gathered. And the handful of people came from either Manila or from our sister church, OCCC, led by Pastor Judy and his wife, Mizell. And I love the fact that I believe it was uh, Bishop Noel, it was you who spoke to them. And then told them about SBCF. And they so willingly decided to come jump on board. And because we were such a small congregation back then, they said, oh, we should support. So after service in the morning, they would take their congregation and then run over to us at Treboa. And then help us out, you know, fill the, the church so it wouldn't feel so empty. And I, I, I remember Pastor Judy, his passion to really go out and just help wherever help is needed. He's a senior pastor of the church. He's used to speaking and sharing God's word, but there was a need in the praise and worship ministry. And uh, so he said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll join you in the praise, of uh, praise and worship ministry. And so at the time, uh, Laika, I believe, was leading praise and worship alongside Leslie, uh, Cooking Nan, my cousin. And they're amazing when they sing, you know, uh, they... they they sing wonderful songs with their hands raised and they're singing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah, you know. And then Pastor Judy is there. Chain by chain, watch them fall in the power of your name. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's how we started. Uh, Pastor Judy's not here. I wish he was here. Uh, I wanted to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Just he inspired so many of us to really push forward and uh, see just the heart of a person who really loves the Lord. So Pastor Judy and Mizell, if you're watching this, thank you so much for helping us out when we started. You know, uh, another funny uh, story I remember. Uh, when Pastor Judy and Mizell weren't able to make it to the church and our group in Manila weren't able to make it as well, our handful of people became um, half a handful of people. And... Uh, there were days when Laika would call the praise and worship team in the beginning of the service and say, all right, uh, let's all stand and, and worship the Lord. Praise and worship team, can you come up front? So we'd all go up in front at the time I was playing the cajon. And by the time everybody got up to their positions, we were looking. And in the congregation, there were just like maybe two people sitting there. It was my mother and father-in-law, and they're looking at each other. <laughs> And then we say, okay, could you please uh, rise as we worship the Lord? And in their head, I could see them thinking, like, me? <laughs> yes, you. There's nobody else here. Please, please stand. <laughs> but those were the early days uh, of the church. But, you know, the reason why I'm sharing with all of you this is because I want to show you exactly how SBCF started. You know, it was nothing like this. You know, bright lights, great stage, 
awesome sound system, lots of volunteers. We got our, actually, you see that wall over there? That was originally supposed to be a garden wall. We signed for a garden wall. And then it, when it arrived, it became a jungle wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, it looks great. So uh, th thank you, uh, uh, our architect Sharon, for putting that there. And I think we're going to get another one on the other side because it's nice to make it like more jungly. Anyway, I'm sorry. I digress. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there were days when in church, it would be a little bit demotivating. It would be a little bit discouraging when you're putting in so much effort and so much work. And it doesn't seem like God is you know, bringing in the people or uh, being faithful to what he said. And there were, there were days when I thought to myself, you know, maybe I'm just crazy after all, you know. Why is God not bringing in new people to come hear his word? You know, we're working day in and day out and it doesn't seem to be materializing. But it was in those days when I remember the words of the late Pastor Luis Jr. Who, uh, before the Lord called him back. Uh, to him, two weeks before the start of the service, he told me, Phil, in your journey as uh, start helping start a church, there's going to be a lot of challenges. There's going to be a lot of trials. And uh, in those days, I want you to remember what the Lord said you, told you on that fateful day when you felt that calling and that prompting to help start a church in Subic Bay. Write that down on a piece of paper. Put it in your side table so you'll never forget. And man, I really needed that. He, he to me was a modern day prophet. And he knew that this journey was going to be taxing uh, for myself and for the people serving. And if it wasn't for that reminder, I don't know if things would have worked out the way it did. But I remembered and I remember him saying that never lose hope and always trust in Christ Jesus. And I did that, just that. And we all did just that. And we pushed forward. So soon after, God moved us to another location, a Korean church in the CBD of the Freeport. So the pastor there allowed us to use their Sunday school to hold our service. It was not a very big Sunday school room, maybe uh, half of this in the front from end to end. And it was good enough for the needs of our church at that time. And it was during this time that God started trickling a people in to the worship center. The, the pictures that you see right now actually is their main worship hall. But uh, we, we were moved to the Sunday school room after the launch. And as God continued to trickle uh, people in, I mean, it was great to start seeing things moving forward. But it wasn't without its difficulties. And at this time, there were only, if I remember correctly, um, maybe about eight of us serving in the ministry right back then. And, you know, we, we, did, uh, we did everything. We did the ushering. We did the praise and worship. Bimao did praise and worship and sermon as well as the offertory. So he, he'd <laughs> be playing the guitar. After that, he'd go straight to the community prayer and then straight to the message while holding his guitar. It's amazing. You should have seen it. <laughs> So, you know, we had the audio-visual. May was there on the PowerPoint, like making sure the slides change. And it's not delayed, delayed ever. May was very accurate at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I did the sound tech. And, I mean, that sounds fancy, sound tech. But to be honest, at that time, sound tech was, uh, well, I was sitting on the cajon back there because uh, I was playing. So I was sitting on something like that. And we had a... Uh, small uh, amplifier. So sound tech was basically moving the volume up and down. That's it. But I tell you, it was so amazing being able to do that because when someone was singing off key, you could easily just put the volume down and no one will notice. And if they continue to singing off key, all you need to do is hit mute. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> But I no longer have that power. Now Tech's taking over over there. Tech, give him a hand for such a wonderful job making our sound here really fantastic. Thank you, brother. You're such a blessing. <laughs> so anyway, things were going well. Then after a year later, God moved us again to a small facility in Benictican. So in this facility in Benictican, this is where uh, we were introduced for the first time to a lot of our full-time staff back then. They were just youth back then. So that's the likes of Ian, 
uh, Vaults, CJ, uh, Pastor Jim. Back then he wasn't a pastor. He was just, uh, you know, we just called him Jim. And so that's when we were first introduced to them. So, I mean, it was really, uh, really great when they started coming. And I guess if we're looking at the problems that we had during then, maybe it's more of a problem for them because, I mean, the volunteers grew in size. And when I mean grow in size, I didn't mean necessarily in numbers. I meant it, I mean it more in a literal sense. Uh, you don't believe me? Uh, Vaults, can you show exhibit A, please? <laughs> exhibit A. So <laughs> that is Ian <laughs> before and Ian after serving here at SVCF. And there's more. Uh, Vaults, give me exhibit B, please. <laughs> exhibit B. Pastor Jim before and Pastor Jim after. <laughs> and they complained God was so good to them during this time because of our pizza ministry. They were there all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we used to have also giveaways every Sunday. You know, like we, we used to have the fudgy bars. And I always wondered every Sunday why at the end of service we buy a box. We only have small congregation, but two boxes are gone. Now I know who's been stealing them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but kidding aside, you know, God did bring in more people to us during that time, thus doubling our size in numbers, which then prompted us to hold two services for a couple of months. Or was it longer? Maybe about a year we were doing it. About a year, I think. So it was at that point we realized, okay, we, we can't fit here anymore. So we got to move again, and God started prompting in our hearts a place to move. And then through again, Bishop Noel, uh, he was able to find us another spot uh, in Admiral's guest house. Now, while uh, it looked fantastic, we weren't exactly sure how we were going to financially pay for the renting of the location. But we knew for a fact that this is where God wanted to go. And so we took one of our first major leaps of faith, and we said, we trust you, Lord. But we know you want us to go there. And so we took that leap of faith. And guess what? When we took that leap of faith, God was good and continued to be good. He brought more and more people to our church and our, we started to grow. We started to grow closer to one another. We started to grow deeper in the study of God's word. And we were just enjoying God's blessing during that time. And you know, I have so many stories I want to tell you about that time. I remember we did uh, the amazing race challenge for Easter one of these days. And we, we did, uh, people went from uh, 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 Royal, the Royal, uh, what's the name, the name of Royal Choices? And then to the Lighthouse and then back. And I remember Pastor Mao being like, <gasps> <sighs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we did that. And this is also the time that, you know, Bragging aside, I introduced my absolutely world-famous, most amazing fishball sauce that even Gordon Ramsay would be put to shame. I did. I introduced it during that time. But I'll save that story for another time because we're on a time limit. <laughs> so uh, eventually, after enjoying a time of uh, provisions by God and blessings, we moved once again, this time to the Lighthouse Hotel along the boardwalk. And uh, while we enjoyed God's provisions there, this was also the time when we experienced one of the biggest griefs, griefs in the church's life and this, the hardest pain that we experienced. It was during this time that uh, Ian's mother and Angel's mother over there, uh, wife of uh, Anthony, San uh, Anthony Santos, she was serving in the ushering ministry as head and... Uh, she had an aneurysm, and it was absolutely devastating for us. And uh, what made it even more devastating is a month later, we also lost Sister Cecil Elia, who was at that time serving in our church council. And the most painful part is one month apart from each other, God called her home exactly the same way through an aneurysm in the subarachnoid region of the brain. So while it was extremely difficult, I mean, holding two uh, services in memory of them, 
it took it was very taxing for all of us and for some of us even more but we continued to support one another and we decided to press on and just continue to trust in God's perfect plan for all of us and that's exactly what we did and so we pressed on so it wasn't long after that that God finally gave us our own ministry center in Alongapo while it wasn't exactly what we were hoping for because we wanted a place where we could worship uh, together and hold offices as well as small gatherings, he did give us something which allowed us to finally have a permanent place for our office staff to go to. And for us, it was an extreme blessing. And uh, we say it's an extreme blessing because he already knew exactly what was going to happen moving forward. And he knew this is exactly what we needed because not long after that, COVID-19 hit. COVID-19 hit and the pandemic shut down everything. And so I remember Pimao and I one time sitting down when we were told uh, by the staff of Lighthouse that we can't hold service anymore. And we were just kind of looking at each other like, uh, so what are we going to do? <laughs> but God opened the doors of opportunity for us to be able to try the online platform. And we went ahead and we did it. And God was good. He provided the people for us to be able to do it, the resources for us to be able to do it. And it was during this time of the pandemic that God allowed us, showed us that we actually had the capabilities to do a Sesame Street or Batibot-like-esque uh, uh, children's show online. And so if it wasn't for that situation, we would have never known. And even during this time, when everything was shut down, SBCF allowed his church to grow and for his word to continue to be shared throughout our area and in the vicinity. So, you know, you think that in the pandemic, everything shuts down and even God himself is taking a break. But I have to say for a fact that when everybody was shut down and full stop. God was busy orchestrating the next move. God was busy orchestrating the next plan for his church, SBCF, and where we would move. Because it was at the height of the pandemic that God opened the doors and answered our prayers for us to finally have a worship center here in Harbor Point. But imagine this. It's the height of the pandemic. People are not doing well economically. We don't know we're going to meet. And suddenly, God answers our prayers and says, hey, I want all of you to move to Harbor Point. Spend millions to put up a new facility, and even the rent will take care of it. Now, <laughs> if you're following the world economy in the way you're thinking, that sounds like a ludicrous idea. That sounds suicidal. But we gathered together as a church council, and we discussed the opening and we didn't decide right away. We each went home, took time to pray. And in our own quiet time, each of us were affirmed that this is where God wanted us to go. And so we went ahead and signed the contract. In the months that followed, we witnessed God's faithfulness in full swing. He led us to the right people to help make this vision a reality. I mean, an another crazy fact. Architect Manny, architect Manny is right here. Could you, could you wave your hand? At the, he is the architect that helped us uh, design this place free of charge. But it's, it's amazing because in all the times we could have crossed path, why only now during the time that SBCF was uh, getting into this project? You know, and it's amazing. And it just so happened. He, one of his ministries is to be able to design uh, constructions and architectural designs for churches for free because it's his ministry. So praise God for you, Architect Manny. If you ever plan to build a church, he's the guy to go to. Just to let you know. <laughs> so uh, there's so many other miracles that I want to share, but because we have limited time, I have to cut it off there. But I, I want to end with this, that uh, church, I stand before you today to tell you all that Jesus is indeed the real deal. And his miracles never fail. He's real. 
I've seen so many miracles and proofs in my life about this. But, you know, in the story of SBCF alone, you will see all the proof that you need to know that God is indeed real and he knows what is best for us. All we need to do is trust in his perfect timing, obey him, persevere in Christ in the face of all trials and hardships. And I know he will deliver on all the promises to all of us. So with that, I'm going to end and I just want to say everybody, SBCL, welcome to your new home. God bless everybody. Thank you, Phil. Let's give God another clap offering for our dear brother. Um, Phil and I, we were uh, the original uh, setup and pack-up team, the both of us. We were carrying speakers, setting up uh, instruments, and at the same time, we were the participants of the Sunday worship. But the Lord... Uh, uh, called people, gathered people, and saved people, and grow people, and uh, for one reason, to build up his church here in the heart of uh, Subic Bay uh, Freeport Zone. And our mission is always to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ and spread the love of God to our uh, to, to Freeport Zone and, uh, and beyond, and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. That is our hearts. That is our passion. That is our focus. And our main passion is not all this work, but Jesus Christ himself is our passion. To honor him in our lives, to glorify God, love people, and experience life uh, together. Thank you once again, uh, Phil, for, for that wonderful testimony. And... Um, We'd like to acknowledge also the presence of our dear Bishop Newell. He, he was our first senior pastor. And um, <laughs> Bishop, uh, Bishop Noel invited me to uh, join the, the worship service here uh, in Subic Bay when they, they were just few, few of them, about 15, 30 people worshiping. And he invited me not to recruit me, but to just share my testimony. And uh, that was his strategy. And then Sunday after Sunday, he was just inviting me and uh, Tita Jen to worship with them until uh, God put in my heart the burden and the call to become part of Subic Bay Community of Faith. And that was 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and I have never felt sorry following the Lord and uh, obeying Him and witnessing this uh, wonderful uh, miracles of God, especially the transformed lives of the people. We grew together and uh, we serve one another and love one another and we believe that God is in our midst. He is in our midst and he is doing mighty things in our church. All glory to God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Because Jesus Christ is the strong foundation and by the grace of God and his faithfulness, SPCF continues to remain strong and steadfast in the Lord. And we cannot boast about anything because we know that what, whatever we have right now, the transformation of lives, the faithful volunteers we have, and uh, the beautiful place that we have right now. This is all the evidences of God's grace and faithfulness in His church as BCF. All glory to God for His favor to this church family. We thank God because we, He gave us a church where we could grow in our faith. Experience the joy of serving Him is really a great joy to serve and participate in kingdom work and to bear fruit as we continue to abide in Him. Our church as VCF is indeed, my friends, this is God's gift for you. 
This church is God's gift for each and every one of us. Our church is, is BCF. It is, it is a home for the broken like you and me. And we will forever remain grateful that Jesus Christ gave his life for us on the cross of Calvary so that we may experience everlasting joy and transformation in him. In one of my uh, personal prayer times, God directed me to a powerful verse found in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. See, I am doing new thing, a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. This verse talks about God's deliverance of the Israelites in Egypt or from Egypt. God was faithful in fulfilling his plans in leading them, them to the promised land and in joyfully his favors for them. Now my reflection with this verse is that God has also been doing something wonderful in our home church as PCF. He was making a way for us in the wilderness, from hopping hotels, function halls, every Sunday, you know, getting locked down because of COVID-19, to finally moving us closer to promised land. And uh, he was making streams for us, giving us a place of refreshment in the form of our new, this semi-permanent place of worship here where you stand right now. While worshiping earlier, you know, when I was praying, God is, is giving me a big picture that more crowds, more people would be coming to the Lord and experience transformation because of His grace and love for them. And in our new worship center, this place, we will continue to exalt God's name. We will continue to listen and commune uh, with our Lord through prayer and meditate on His Word. We will continue to humble ourselves before God in His mighty hand and we will continue to choose to surrender to His will. Now Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 21 verse 12, My house will be called a house of prayer. So as BCF, this is our house of worship, our house of prayer. Let us enjoy God's presence in our midst. Let us enjoy His holy presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst, transforming us, changing us, and drawing us closer to God. Like David says in the Psalm 27 verse 4, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. And moving forward, there will be many exciting things God will do in our church. And I can see people coming together, worshiping the Lord from different walks of life. I can see people's lives being transformed through the healing grace of God. And I could see people loving one another, serving one another, encouraging one another. And by the grace of God, SBCF will be a great blessing in our homes, in our community, and to eventually to all parts of the world. This church is God's blessing in Subic Bay, Freeport Zone, in Olongapo, and beyond. With, that, with these thoughts, I would like to encourage everyone to remain faithful and obedient to God because I also believe that there will be new challenges that would come our way. And I, my, my uh, prayer for you and for myself is that we will be more prayerful. We will be more dependent on God 
and uh, our weapon is when we bow down before God. We bow down before him in prayer and ask him, Lord, this is your battle. And just allow us to win the victory with your mission in our church. Always remember that God is good and faithful. And he is able, as we experience right now, he is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. I feel we'll tell you more about that. And uh, this is just the beginning. And we are just getting started. Let us continue to discern and obey what God wants us to do. And I believe that God is prompting you and calling you and impressing in your heart what you can do for his kingdom. You are part of this kingdom work, my brothers and my sisters. Before I end my, my short message, I, will, I would like to thank this opportunity. First, our church council, and most of them are the pioneers of our church. Let's give them a clap offering. They're praying for you. They love you. They want you to uh, be uh, comfortable in your seats and in our ministries. They uh, sacrifice a lot for the Lord. And I would like also to recognize those people, you know, the founding members or, of our churches, BCF, like uh, Tita Dan Malena, Tita Louis Malena, Bishop Noel, Tita Jen, please stand, and uh, Tita Shirley. So these are the, the pioneers. And Tita Adi is here also. So they, they were the first people gathered just to gather regularly on Sundays together with their families. Three families, the Chuachaco families, the Pantoja families, the Malana families, and the Cooking Nun families are helping us cook, Sisip Cooking Nun families helping us build up our worship uh, services and, uh, and uh, music ministry that time in Sunday school. Thank you so much for, for obeying the Lord and following him. Thank you for fulfilling your call to serve God in this church. I would like to also appreciate the volunteers of this church. Let's give them a uh, top offering. You are honoring God by serving him faithfully. Never get tired serving the Lord. And we thank God for the USB team. Uh, the, the USB team is the universal uh, setup boys. <laughs> we call them. So there will be no more setup and pack up uh, uh, <laughs> ministry. Rain or shine, they're doing that. But now, no more pack up and setup. But uh, please don't just uh, be chilled because uh, Vols, we have Vols here, they have a lot of work and ministry for you. There's a lot of things to be done still in our worship center. And uh, your new assignment will be given to you very soon. Well, <laughs> we thank God for the firewall through the leadership of uh, Jackie Pantoja. Wow, thank you for ushering us to the presence of God in worship. Thank you for the band members. They have different stories. How the Lord called them and uh, transformed them and how they love Jesus. And you can see in their demeanor, they want to worship the Lord with their skills and talents. They want to, they want to be used by God. And uh, the servers, the ushering ministry. Thank you for serving us, making us feel comfortable in our uh, worship, Sunday worship. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Kids Have. May is watching. She's not here with us right now for some reason. But thank you, May, for your leadership to our Sunday school ministry. Thank you for taking care of our children. Thank you for all your hard work, Sunday school teachers. Let's give them a clap offering. You know who you are. Especially this pandemic season. You know, filming. 
filming numerous series of lessons just to guide and accommodate the spiritual journey of our children because these children are important to the Lord and we need to mold them in the fear of God, in the wisdom of God, in the knowledge of God. We thank the Lord for Pastor Jim right there for leading the youth. Okay. Yeah, the band here, the, uh, who sang um, Freedom is Coming, they're all youth. And, they, and, and most of them, 80% of them, by the way, came from Sunday school. Our homegrown. And there's more. Yeah, praise God. Thank you, my beloved SBCF Church, this congregation, Subic Bay Community of Faith, for your prayers, for your love, for your support, your generous and uh, sacrificial giving. You do it for God. It's all for Him. And God is honored. How much is the value or cost of one soul? Give me an amount. One soul is priceless. But you are participating and contributing to the work of God for His glory because our desire is to just bring one soul that God would change and transform and be saved by the grace of God. Thank you so much for all your love and support for our church. We are indeed the body of Jesus Christ. He is the functioned head of this church and praise be to God. I would like to thank also our brothers and sisters in Christ who serve in other ministries, our ministry parts partners in, uh, in, in other churches like uh, GCF Ortigas. And some of them are, are here worshiping with us. Can you please raise your hands and wave? A lot of them. As GCF Ortigas what was and still is our home church. We came from there. We were molded by there, by trained and equipped in our home church, GCF. And we, the Lord called us to a different place to continue the ministry and the mission of God. So we love G uh, GCF Ortiga so much. Thank you, uh, Pastor Larry Fabiona, for all your support and love for our church. And th thank you, Pastor BJ Sebastian, for all your prayers and love uh, uh, for our church here, humble church here in SBCF. And uh, we thank you. I would like to say a special uh, 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 thank you to our dear Tita Adi Cooking Nan for since the first day of our church, you have been our great minister, uh, uh, prayer warriors, and uh, you have supported us a lot. Your family, Dr. Alex, uh, Leslie, and Andy, thank you so much for loving us, PCF. Yeah. May God bless you all. 10,000 folds over for your generosity in building up the kingdom of God. And I would like to recognize also our dear brother. We have recognized him also. The people who uh, created this place. Uh, Architect Manny Dakanai, thank you so much for designing this place for us. It's so beautiful. He is... Uh, He's a pastor, by the way. He's an architect, but he is also a pastor. He's, he's preaching. Uh, pastor, uh, uh, pastor Dakanai, <laughs> Pastor Manny Dakanai, and also uh, Sharon. Sharon, thank you so much for all your hard work for making this place uh, beautiful for us and comfortable for us. Marami salamat. And uh, also for all your stuff. I heard that, uh, let's pray for uh, his peop her people. They had an accident recently going home to Bataan. So uh, vehicular accidents. So let's let's pray for them. I was I was praying for for your people, uh, uh, at architect Sharon. Yeah. So <clears throat> thank you so much. <laughs> All right. And special mention also for our dear bride brother Ian, who became the the project manager of all this. So for. So many months he's been, uh, he's been like uh, busy, like uh, coordinating with suppliers, with the uh, Harbor Point, SBMA people, with our permits, with everything. 
just to make this uh, possible. Ian, have, had, he has uh, no experience at all in construction, but the Lord like, uh, gifted him and chose him to be our project manager. Let's honor our dear brother, Ian, <laughs> our homegrown uh, person. And um, uh, you saved Kuya Phil from losing the remaining hairs uh, left on his head. <laughs> and uh, he is forever grateful for that. He is an admin assistant. So great job, Ian. And of course, all glory and honor to God for everything, for all these things that we have. Let us work together in advancing the kingdom of God. We have the message of God. Our message is Jesus Christ. That through Jesus Christ, we can find salvation and transform lives. That is the good news. And this church, we have the good news that we could spread in our homes, community, and beyond. We have the message, the good news of salvation. And let's be part of it. Let's be part of advancing the kingdom of God. Let's continue to be faithful in our mandate to glorify God. Everything that we're doing here is for His glory and loving people, bringing them to the saving knowledge of God and disciple them and experience life together as we fulfill our mission to develop dynamic disciples of Jesus Christ. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Now I would like to call our dear uh, Bishop Noel to come up here. He will be praying for the dedication of this place. And as well as I would like to call the church council of this church to, be, to come up here. And let us uh, represent uh, God to our people by laying our hands to them and praying over them. Pastor Jim, join us up here. This is uh, Leslie Nabong. She's a missionary also and a director uh, of a Subic, uh, Project Life Subic, and she serves as one of our board members. This is Tita Grace, one of our pioneer member and uh, She's, uh, she loves you guys so much. You just don't know. This is uh, Ate Edna, and she leads the ministry. Uh, uh, praise God, it's, it's Friday, together with his husband, Arlie. And our chairman of the board, uh, Phil, the very faithful and obedient Phil, who serves as our church council uh, chairman and uh, church administrator. Thank you for making my life easy by by doing all this because I'm just focusing on my calling that is to preach the word, to shepherd people and teach people and disciples and all this hard work. This is the work of an administrator. And thank you, we God has gifted us a great man who loves the church, very obedient to God. And the most imp important thing, characteristic of Phil, his faith is unwavering. His faith in God is unwavering. So God gives us millions of, of uh, this costs a lot of millions, but because of prayers and faith and obedience to the Lord, God favored us with His grace and blessing. And of course, our dear Pastor Jim, our youth pastor. So remember us in our prayers. And um, our dear Bishop Noel, uh, our Chancellor, will be praying for us. <laughs> yeah. Let's praise the Lord together. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon.
The best clap offering belongs to the Lord. The word of the Lord says, Pastor Mao and Church Council, He who started a good work in you will bring it to completion until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the work that the Lord has started will continue until Jesus Christ comes again. Amen? Amen. I cannot forget August and September 2010 when we met in your place, in your dining room, in your house, in White Plains, when my brother Luis gathered the team and he said, he just invited me for dinner. I was just there for dinner and my <laughs> wife. And he said, Noel, if I am not there at SBCF, he was planning to retire here. If I'm not there at SBCF, please preach at SBCF when I am not there. That was August. And then another day, we went to a beach near Triboa. Ed's water that belongs to the Malana family. And the team was gathered there. Those were important and key days. And prayed and prayed. And we prayed for you in May that the Lord would fulfill the vision that God has placed in your heart on that Vesper service at Green Hills Christian Fellowship. And then the first. Um, Mothers of the Heart at George Dewey High School. That was the first time I got to meet the Malanas, you know, face to face and very close. And there, they dedicated their lives to the Lord and brought the whole family. And then we did that again. And we said, September 10, we will launch SBCF. September September. Four, I took my brother to the airport attending a conference in Kota Kinabalu with Edmund Chan in the picture. September 6, I received a call that they were resuscitating him after a massive heart attack. That was September, August, September. And we were to launch in September 10, <laughs> Matters of the Heart. And we met in prayer. That was a major interruption. And Phil asked me, are we going to continue <laughs> this event? And I said, this is the Lord's work. Whenever interruptions happen, God has a plan. And the rest was history. And Phil, thank you for that testimony. All this building, brothers and sisters, happened with a backdrop backdrop of the pandemic crisis. There's economic crisis, people are dying, are sick, but God used this crisis to open the door of Harbor Point for SBCF. To God be the glory. And He affirmed that His presence is with us all the way here at SBCF. And praise and glory belongs to the Lord because you already mentioned how God touched all people. From you and May, the families, everyone that God has called. Pastor Jim Bitang called, you know. When he died, when Luis died, we said we will start Luis Pantoja Foundation and we gathered money. And that money was, part of that money was used for him to go to seminary. <laughs> Legacy goes on and continues. So praise God. It happened during pandemic. Praise God for touching people who donated. And all of you who sacrificed from architects to volunteers. Set up and tear down. Wow, we will look back. And say hallelujah. But God surely provided. Because he promised. My God. Paul. Apostle Paul said. My God shall supply 
all your needs. Everybody say, all your needs. And when God provides for SBCF, He will provide for each one of us. My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Would you please join me? Let's stand up. Let's pray for Pastor Mao. Would you please stretch forth your hand towards them? And this is not just them. This is including all of us. We are part of this home. We're part of this family. Amen? And we vow and we commit ourselves to be together in this ministry until the last person in Subic Bay community will hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until the whole Philippines and wherever God leads every one of us, they will be worshipers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us in the last 12 years. Praise you, O oh God. You have not left us even a second. There were interruptions. There were crises. There were deaths. There were trials. But Lord, you never left us. You never forsake us. We praise you, O oh God. Even during this two and a half years of pandemic crisis, when there were so many questions like, where are you, God? Why is this happening? You were orchestrating everything so that this property, so that this place will be given to SBCF. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for preparing everything during those difficult times. And Lord, you continue to raise up people, to touch people. Thank you for the disciples that have decided to follow you. Thank you for the volunteers. Thank you for the people who said, I want to serve God. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for the volunteers and everyone who have become part of this beautiful SBCF family. And oh, oh God, you have given us these servant leaders, humble servant leaders, faithful children of you. We thank you for our senior pastor, Pastor Mao, oh God. Thank you for Pastor Jim Bitangkol. Thank you, God, that uh, in the course of day-to-day -day ministry and the many administrative duties, they are faithfully praying for us, serving us, and preparing spiritual food so that it will be delivered to us nutritiously. And every one of God, us are growing spiritually because of the, the Word of God that is being taught to us. Thank you, Lord, for these men and women led by Phil. Thank you, God, for raising, up, raising him up and May and the whole family. Thank you, Lord, for these ladies who have joined the work of God. Join what God is doing in SBCF. Lord, you are in the business of advancing your gospel. You are in the business of advancing the kingdom, the glorious kingdom agenda of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our city. Thank you, Lord, that as Pastor Mao declared, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. With this confidence and assurance, O oh God, that you, Jesus, you are the builder of the church. Use these servant leaders powerfully, O oh God. Powerfully. I pray for wisdom. We pray, O oh God, for shield and heads of protection be upon them. In these difficult times of church life, in these difficult times in the Christian history, O oh God, Thank you for raising up these servant leaders to lead this community of faithful believers and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless them, bless them, O Lord, and bless the whole church, O God, in the name of Jesus, that you will find each one of us faithfully following you, loving Jesus with all my, our heart, our mind, and strength, and serving you to the utmost. Thank you for this building that you have given us, O oh Lord.
from here, many people will be healed. Many people will learn the truth. Many people will be delivered. Many families will be blessed. Many people will hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And from here, many will be sent out to be missionaries. Many will be sent out to be disciple makers wherever the Lord sends every one of us. God, to you alone, to you alone, belong all the glory. You are the potter and we are just the clay in the potter's hand. Here we are. Send us, O Lord. Bless us, BCF. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. given us but uh, you know now that this building is accomplished you know we don't stop working here uh, I want you to stand with me and let this be our declaration together as a church as we sing this song that God would continue building our lives together because the church is not the building it's where the people are at amen so this morning or this afternoon now I encourage you to let this be the prayer bottom of your heart that God will continue building in each and every one of you.
2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we live by faith and not by sight. Truly, this is a glorious day as we celebrate God's goodness in our new sanctuary. Indeed, God is an awesome God and a faithful God. Wow, we have gone a long way. Let me tell you what happened at the church council. When the church council first met to pray and to decide about God's leading in opening a place right here at Harbor Point, I have to admit I had my doubts, okay? I was afraid. For 12 years now, we have moved from place to place. Yes, God has been so awesome, and I have been a witness to God's faithfulness to our church. However, around this time, the council felt God was finally, you know, leading us to look for a more permanent place of worship. I, all of you know that for a long time, the last place we would worship was at the lighthouse, and if the lighthouse was not available, we would look for another hotel where we can go Sunday after Sunday. Sometimes it was the last minute, and I know my son and the church team would panic not knowing where we will worship, but God has always been good. So, especially for the USB boys, it was truly a very, very tiring job, right? Um, it was a tiring job, and I just want to use this opportunity to thank you boys for your dedication, your love for the Lord and his work. Anyway, it was during this time of the pandemic that somehow God led us to inquire about renting a place here. Remember, it was the height of the pandemic. Um, I know pre-pandemic, there were times when we tried to ask Harbor Point if we could lease a place here, but the leasing department would even ignore our questions or our inquiries, okay? Because probably they did not know we can even afford to rent a place here. But my son started negotiating with the leasing department of this mall during that time of the pandemic. It was a big dream, but slowly it became clear to us God was truly leading us here. The doors were starting to open. First, the price that we were negotiating for was agreed upon. Then one by one, all the other conditions and the requests that we were making were given to us. So indeed, this was affirmation after affirmation, and it was hard not to see God's hand at work at this time. So we decided to take that leap of faith. The council would meet regularly to discuss the new project, the renovation of this place. And during one of our meetings, Philip showed us the cost of the renovation. Whoa, I have to admit I was quite overwhelmed. I was scared. Uh, I, you see, I, my sister and I were businesswomen. Before we even go into a project of opening something, you need to do a sort of a project study. You, know? you have to do a feasibility analysis. Kaya ba natin o hindi natin kaya? Okay, this, this is my training. I'm no longer a businesswoman, but you know, we just won't go into a business without, without thinking about it and and uh, doing our arithmetic, you know, one plus one. So I started having real serious question in my head. How, ca how can a very small church like us raise that kind of money that Philip was showing the council that we were 
supposed to raise. It was then that my son reminded me, Ma, he said, okay, um, did we not see so clearly that God was leading us here? We have received so many affirmation from God. And everyone in the church council said, yes, everything we wanted was being granted. God opened all the doors, and there were no further objections from the council. The council was united in their decision. Why would you doubt now? My son asked. What little faith I had. I told Philip, one plus one is two. One plus one cannot be 100, right? So, but wow, this is what I forgot. What little faith I had. I was focused on the problem, and I forgot for a while that I had a big and awesome God. I was living by sight, not by faith. A few weeks ago, Pastor Mao gave us a message when Jesus called Peter. God told Peter, after they have been fishing the whole night and caught nothing, to once again cast their net into the deep waters and trust God and have faith. Just cast your net into the deep waters. So we started the campaign of raising the funds, okay, for our building project. And I am a witness to so many miracles, literally, so many miracles of God's faithfulness. There were many people who gave, you know, some from other churches. In fact, our home church, GCF, contributed a lot also to our church. And um, after, after we showed the testimony of Philip when we were raising funds, you see, church, it's not about us. It's not even about our resources. It's not even how rich or how poor we are. It is about obeying his leading Obeying and taking that step of faith. Just cast your net into deep waters. That was what God was telling me. Then just obey and he will do the rest. Today, I want to thank everybody who gave sacrificially, not only of your resources, but also of your time, your hard work, your prayers. May God bless you abundantly. You see, there are still many things that has to be done. We still have a lot of financial obligations. <laughs> and not only to finish this project, but to continue operating in this new and beautiful worship center, where we can become a beacon of truth, a beacon of truth, a beacon of light here in Supic, Olongapo, and beyond. I want to challenge you people, let us partner together in furthering, furthering God's kingdom by bringing our tithes and offering into this sanctuary. God has given us a promise when we, were, when we are faithful with our first fruits. In Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. You know, this verse has been mentioned so many times during our offertory. But do you truly understand the meaning of these verses? Israel was an agricultural land at that time and they measured their wealth through their harvest. Yun tanim harvest nila, and also by their livestock. For us, we offer the first 10% of our income or whatever resources God has given you. It is not, first fruit does not mean you're left over. First fruit does not mean what after you budget and there's tira, that's what you're going to give to God. It is not loose change. 
it is not one you can afford to give after you're done with all your expenses. First fruits just means that. First, the amount that belongs to the Lord. It's the portion that belongs to God, and we are to set that aside even before we do our budgeting and our expenses. Before we start spending, we set aside what belongs to him. And it's, it is not important about, the amount does not matter. What is important is your heart. God looks at your heart when you give. He looks at your heart, so therefore I challenge you to always give with a joyful heart. Give God what is due him, okay? Give him your first fruits. Then see what God has promised. How your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Amen. Okay. Anyway, this is what it means. Let us all now join together and make this vow to the Lord to bring our first fruits, to bring what belongs to him, to bring our best to the church so that the work in SBCF will continue and the kingdom of God will continue to grow. Shall we pray? Lord, you are a sovereign God, a God who is in control, a God who created the heavens and the earth, a God who owns the whole world. Lord, did you not perform all the miracles that is recorded in the Bible? How you delivered the Israelites and provided for them in the wilderness? Did you not bless SBCF through these 12 years from the very beginning and provided for all our needs? Did you not open the doors for us to allow us to build this new sanctuary at Harbor Point, Lord? Lord, you showed us that no matter how small we are, if we are faithful to your calling, you will be faithful and we will continue to sustain us. And now, Lord, will you continue to provide for the needs of our church so that we can continue to be a beacon of light, a beacon of hope, so we can continue to share the good news to the people who are still lost. Indeed, Lord, we have cast our nets into deep waters and we want to live by faith and not by sight I ask dear Lord that you will now bless each and one of us here who will give that you will touch our hearts to give joyfully that you will place this burden in our hearts to reach others and thus further your kingdom through our giving I ask now, Lord, that you will bless our tithes and our offering. May these gifts and our worship be holy and acceptable to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, thank you, Tita Grace, for that wonderful offer to our message. And guys, how are you? All good? All good? All good. We're almost at the end of our worship service and I hope that this has been an insightful, joyful, and also a memorable experience for you all. And we are glad that you're all here spending this time with us as God gives us this wonderful house. And we just have a few announcements before we go. So first up, Kids Hub. Next week, August 14, 2022 is the start of Kids Hub. Yeah, where, where are my kids at? Oh, they're not here. <laughs> so, Kids Hub, uh, we have three classes for Kids Hub. First is Sandbox. Sandbox is for, from ages 3 to 5 years old. Cloud, from ages 6 to 8 years old. And Bridge, from ages 9 to 13 years old. If you have any questions, you can approach our Kids Hub teachers. Where are my kids at? Kids Hub teachers at? There we go. You can approach them. And if you are registering your kid for Kids Hub, kindly approach the ushering booth for the registration form. And also the teachers has one. Next, board game donations for the youth. Youth! I think. Yan, yan, yan. 
Uh, Daryl, I want to say thank you for playing with us and knowing me for helping the youth this, this morning. There, there, there you are. So, uh, the Youth Ward, we, uh, our ministry is accepting board, game, board games donations so that we could use it in our uh, weekly meetings. Also, we not only board games, if you have any other games that you could give us, uh, Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5. Somebody gave an Xbox. Thank you for the one who donated the Xbox. Let's give him a clap offering. And a Monopoly. Thank you. I'm not going to name names. Thank you for those who had donated. Yes, we accept also electronic items. Come approach me and we'll talk about it. <laughs> but it's in the office now. But if you still want to donate for, for our ministry, we would really, really, really appreciate it as we continue to build up the youth. We are also continuing to build up our youth center slash Sunday school room. So if you have, yes, yes. If you have any donations, please uh, come drop by our office any time of the day. We uh, Come approach me and we'll be more than happy to accommodate you. Next up, prayer requests. So if you have any prayer requests that you would like us to pray for, our team, we, we love to pray for people. Just fill, just fill up the forms that you have on your, uh, on your seats there, our prayer request form. Fill it up and just drop it in our um, um, offering boxes and we would love to hear from you. Next, our social media, uh, we would like to encourage everyone to please like our Facebook page, um, SBC Faith PH, and subscribe to our ch uh, church YouTube channel. Click on subscribe so that you would be notified. Us. And click on the bell button so that you'll be notified of Subic Bay Community of Faith, our YouTube channel. Please help us in sharing this uh, platform so that we could get our message across to many, many more people all around the world, and we would appreciate if you do that with us, if you help us. And thank you. Last, um, a few more items. Restroom. If you need to use the restroom, our restrooms are found near Burger King and one near our activity center. Oh, I like this one, number six. We will be giving away something for all who had attended. Not all, but it's a limited amount, but um, it's first come first serve basis. Are you excited for our giveaway? Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you for being excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> our giveaway is very, 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 very wonderful. It's what you call a twist foldable fan. What's that? Pamay pay lang po yon. Pamay pay lang po yon. Pamay ibigay po namin. Pasensya na po yun po kina yon ng amin budget. <laughs> Pamay pay lang po. Pero uh, our fans, are, uh, you could just approach the ushering team so that you could get, go ahead and get one. Again, this we have a limited uh, amount of um, fans or pamay pay. So please go ahead and just uh, do it. Uh, but please do it in an orderly manner. Please do not clog up our exit as well. Number seven, worship service next week. I'm so used to seeing this in the cinema. <laughs> but now... Next week, we will still be holding our worship service here in our wonderful, wonderful house. Amen. More, yeah. And again, what P. Mao said, this would be a beacon for all of us. A beacon not only for here in Olongapo, but a beacon as well, hopefully for Zambales, the Bataan area, and all those lost people out there. So come and enjoy our worship service here next week. Same time, again, same place. And I think, here we go. Lastly, our service would not be complete if we do not recognize our first-time guests. Do we have any first-timers? I see a lot, actually. Can you please raise up your hand so that we could recognize you and welcome you to the family? Wow, praise God. Thank you so much for being with us today. Wow, wow. And again, uh, guys, thank you for spending this time with us. Uh, I hope that you again had a wonderful time. Let me go ahead and call on All right, let me go ahead and call on uh, Pastor Mao, Reverend Mao for our benediction. Thank you Pastor Jim. Let's give this guy a clap offering. <laughs> thank you brother. And uh, thank you for the family members of our uh, at church uh, people here. Thank you for coming and I've met some of you and uh, please 
uh, consider this your home church as well. Next Sunday, we will be uh, continuing our sermon series on uh, Encounter God. Invite people so that they may encounter God in this place. So more God's Word, more uh, prayers, and more exciting things to come in our home church. Shall we all stand and let us close this wonderful worship service with a word of prayer. Father, we give you all the glory and honor for what you have done in our lives and in the life of your church as BCM. We thank you, Lord, for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that guards our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus when we present to you our request, our petitions with thanksgiving. We are grateful, O Lord, for all your provisions. We are grateful for your sustaining grace, for your love and mercy. Your grace is enough, O God, and we thank you so much because we have this grace of God in our lives and in our needs. Only by your grace we can overcome. It's all about you. It's all about Jesus, our Lord and Savior, to be exalted in this place and in our lives. More of you, Lord Jesus, and less of us. All glory belongs to you. Now, Lord, we pray that you may empower your church. Fill us your Holy Spirit. Enable and empower us to be your bold witnesses to the world. We pray that you may use our lives, even though imperfect we are. We believe, oh God, that you will work in our lives, transforming us, changing us, and using us, oh Lord, to make a difference in the lives of others. Empower your churches, PCF, oh Lord, to do your mission, to make disciples of all nations for the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord of all. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you peace. Now until we meet again, God bless you all. Glory to God. Amen. Pagpalain po kayo ng Panginoon. You can uh, feel free to just walk around and, and uh, visit the building, check the rooms, the Sunday's rooms, the pastor's room, have fellowship with one another. Maraming salamat po. Jesus.